Welcome! So right now you should have your worksheet out and you should write down anything I write down and if I say something that you think uh, is worth writing down you should write that as well and you should also be considering any questions that you're not sure about when, when I do something or if I say something. So let's take a look at this problem here where we want to simplify the expression 2 over x minus 3 plus negative 1 over x plus 2. I want to add two rational expressions. Well, to do that, the first thing I would do is factor the denominators, but you can see the denominators here are prime. They don't factor anymore. So because these two denominators don't have any factors in common, I can just multiply by the other's denominator to get a common denominator. So I'll multiply by x plus 2 over x plus 2 over here. And on the right, I'll multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3. So then my common denominator would be x plus 2 times x minus 3. I have it reversed here, but that's okay because multiplication is commutative. And then I would distribute to the numerators and combine the numerators. And if I did that, I'd get x plus 5 over x minus 3 times x plus 2. But what we're going to be talking about is actually the reverse of this. We're going to start out with this fraction here. And we're going to try to get back to the original two fractions. And this process is called partial fraction decomposition. Uh, we're trying to make partial fractions from a big fraction, and decomposition just means breaking it down into its parts. Now, it's not going to be as quite as easy as you think. You might think, just put an x on this first fraction and a 5 on the second fraction, but you can see it's not going to work out that easy. So we're going to break this down into two parts. The first part, this video, is going to focus on how do I figure out what my denominators are going to be for the separate fractions. And in the next video we'll talk about, or the next lesson, we'll talk about how do you figure out what these constants are up top. So before we do anything, we've got to go over some vocab. Now the vocab is not very intense. It's, in fact, it's a lot of words you've seen before, but we need to know these so when we talk about the different cases, you know what we're talking about. So the first term you need to understand are linear factors. So linear, let's give an example, say x plus 3 x plus 3 is linear because it has degree 1. Another example of that would be 2x minus 1. Again, look, degree 1, that makes it linear. So these are just linear factors. A repeated linear factor is you take a linear factor, say x plus 3, but it's the same linear factor over and over again, which we would represent with an exponent. So this is x plus 3 to the fifth power. That's really x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3. x plus 3, a linear factor, is repeated how many times? Five times. Next we have prime quadratic factors. So let's start with quadratic. We know what quadratic is. Quadratic is degree 2. So this would be a quadratic factor. And it's prime because it doesn't factor. x squared plus 4 doesn't factor. If it did factor, you're going to end up with linear factors. So this is prime because it doesn't factor. It's quadratic because of the degrees too. Another example would be, say, x squared plus x minus 10. It's quadratic because of the 2, but it doesn't factor. And then we have repeated prime quadratic factors. So repeated just like linear factors. So that's like taking a, quad, a prime quadratic factor like x squared plus 4, but a repeated, say, to the third power. So it's repeated three times. That's x squared plus 4 times x squared plus 4 times x squared plus 4. So that's the terminology we're going to use below when we talk about how do you set up partial fraction decomposition. So no matter what the first thing you have to make sure you do is take the denominator and factor it completely. That's always the first step if you want to decompose a fraction. So again, decomposing a fraction is taking this one fraction and splitting it up into multiple fractions. And there's four cases. In the first case, you're given distinct linear factors. Now distinct just means that the factors are unique from each other. So x minus 4 is different factor from x plus 2. Now because I have just have two distinct factors. I'll get just two fractions, and each one gets their own fraction. So I'll put x minus 4 in the denominator and x plus 2. Now, since these factors are linear, and you can put parentheses around it, you don't need to, but because they're linear, up top I'm going to just put a constant a. Since a is just a constant, uh, it has degree 0. Linear is degree 1. So the numerator will always be 1 degree more excuse me, the, the numerator will be one degree less, 
than the degree of the denominator. So here I have degree 1, but a is just a constant because there's no x. And over here I already used a, so I'll use b. And in the next lesson we'll talk about how would you figure out what a and b are. Now we have repeated linear factors. So a linear factor, x minus 2, because it has degree 1, but it's repeated three times. So if it's repeated three times, I'm going to need three fractions to break this up. And I'm going to go right up the ladder. So the first one's going to be x minus 2 to the first power. Now I don't need to write it, but I will. Then x minus 2 to the second power. And finally, x minus 2 to the third power. And if, let's say this was to the seventh power, I'd have seven fractions. Now these, fr these factors are linear, so I'll make just a degree zero constant, A, B, and C. Because inside, they're all linear. Now we have prime quadratic factors. You can see in the denominator that I have quadratics, degree two, but neither one of these factors. And this is going to be similar to the distinct linear factors. Each one of these will still get its own fraction, because they're not repeated. I don't really need the parentheses, but I'll put them in anyway. And x squared plus 2x plus 4. Now here's the difference with quadratic. The numerator has to be one less in degree than the denominator. So the denominator is quadratic. So when I make the numerator, I need it to be linear. So what I'll make it is ax plus b. Same with the second fraction. The denominator is quadratic. So I need to make the numerator linear. So I already used a and b, so I'll do cx plus d. And the last case is repeated prime quadratic factors. This means similar to 2, but the factors are quadratic. So I have x squared plus 1, which is quadratic, and it's repeated twice. So I'll need two separate fractions. The first one will just be x squared plus 1 to the first power. Again, I don't need to write the 1. And x squared plus 1 to the second power. And because this is a quadratic factor inside, I need to make the numerator linear, one degree less, ax plus b. Quadratic, make the numerator linear, 3x plus d. So let's turn the paper over and let's try some examples right here. So we want to write the form of the partial fraction decomposition, and then we don't want to solve for the constants. So step one would be to factor, but we can see the denominator's factor, and I get two distinct linear factors. So each one of these is just going to go ahead and get its own fraction, x plus 5 plus x minus 3. And because both those factors are linear, I'll just put a constant in the numerator, a and b. On number two here, factor the denominator, it's already factored. So we start out, we have a, a, a unique linear factor, just x, so that'll get its own f fraction. And because this is linear, we make it constant up top. Then we have x plus 6, which is linear, but we can see it's repeated four times. So it's going to re actually require four separate fractions on its own. And we're going to go right up the ladder here. So we're going to have x plus 6 to the first power. Hold on a second, sorry about that. Again, I don't need to write the one. Then x plus 6 to the second power, x plus 6 to the third power, and x plus 6 to the fourth power. And since these are linear on the inside, I'm just going to put a constant with degree 0 on the numerator. So we'll just go down the alphabet, b, c, D, and E. And we'll get into how you solve those later. On number three down here, we factor the denominator, it's already factored. So here we have a repeated quadratic factor. Inside's quadratic, and it's repeated twice, so that'll require two separate fractions. So you get x squared plus one to the first power, and then x squared plus one to the second power. And because these are quadratic, I have to make the numerator linear. So I'll have ax plus b, and then cx plus d. And I have one more factor left, which is linear, and a single linear factor, so it'll get its own uh, fraction. And since this is linear, I just make this constant. I've already used a, b, c, and d, so this will be e. Now number four is the first time I come across a denominator that's not factored, so let's factor it. X squared minus 25, it's a difference of two squares, x plus 5 times x minus 5. So two distinct linear factors, they'll just each get their own fraction. 
x plus 5 plus x minus 5. And since they're linear, I'll put a just a constant up top, a and b. Now number 5 down here, we have to start by factoring the denominator so we can pull out an x squared. Okay, so let's start with this x squared. There's going to be two ways we can choose to handle it, depending on how we look at it. We can look at this as x squared altogether, in which case it's just a prime quadratic factor. And if we look at it that way, it gets one fraction. And because this is quadratic, we'll get a linear term up top. And the second fraction here we can see is clearly a distinct prime quadratic factor. So we're going to just get one fraction. It's not repeated. And the numerator will be linear, uh, sorry, linear again, yes. Yeah. So ax plus b, so this will be cx plus d. Now the other way to handle this is we can look at this as x squared, in which case it's a repeated linear factor. And if we look at it that way, we get two fractions, x plus x squared. But then we just have linear, uh, sorry, constant factors up top. And then we would have still have this quadratic factor over here, cx plus d. Now these are actually entirely equivalent. Because if I just take these two fractions here, the a over x plus b over x squared, and I give a common denominator by multiplying x over x, and then combine these, I'm just going to get ax plus b over x squared. So it doesn't really matter which way you choose to handle it, but it's two ways to handle it. So the next thing you want to do is try the problem on the bottom of this page on your own, see if you really got this. And you also want to remember that I had buffalo chicken pizza for dinner tonight. All right, good night.